And we're good to go. Are we really, though? I think we are. <laughs> I think we finally <laughs> fucking are. Jesus Christ. Because we, we still don't have internet. So no, uh, we're no. going to have to broadcast like our, our forefathers in, yeah. in radio without a safety net, so to speak. This is exactly why Alex Jones prints his, his articles. <laughs> it finally makes sense. Uh, we're on episode 104, 105. Yeah, pretty much. And I finally wish I would have printed out my articles. Yeah, it would have really helped because there were some good articles this week, but fuck it. Well, I guess that's what I get for parking my RV in front of Comcast. Time to just... time to test the old memory here. Sort of. Uh, where to start then? I guess Nashville? <sighs> yeah, I guess uh, the one that blew up. Yeah, he, uh, I, I guess we got a name now. Let me, uh, I, I got that written down somewhere. Mr. Anthony Q. Warner, 63, has been identified as the quote-unquote bomber. I don't know why bombers in quotes. Anthony what, Warner? Exactly. Oh, <laughs> you my heard goodness. Me. Q. Warner. Q. Oh, Warner. That's, uh, that's going to lead some people down a dangerous path. I hadn't seen that name until about an hour ago, so I, I can only imagine... Where that's going to lead. I did, I got to play one of my favorite games, which is uh, who's the first one to call a false flag. <laughs> and I think this time it was, it was about, it was less than 30 minutes. It was 20 something minutes from when the report first went out uh-huh. to a post on the conspiracy subreddit talking about how it was a false flag. <laughs> I think, I think my favorite being, uh, it was CGI. Now, one of my favorite, I haven't had any good false flags other than it was a test for like future operations or some shit. Yeah, that's, that's what I've seen too. Um, but I do find it hilarious that there was like an ice cream truck uh, horn up top just like, please get out of the way. <laughs> this car is about to detonate. That was really surreal. Like, Have you seen that? Uh, there's security camera footage that picks it up where it just like it gives the the warning and then it goes off it looks like something out of a shitty horror movie except no one died so well, except like, for apparently mr anthony q warner yeah which but is I, this is what's being reported now is apparently the guy who did the bombing was in the rv or, or something like he blew himself up with it so is this a suicide then uh they, or or is this a patsy and they just killed him and left him in the van? That's our Lee Harvey Oswald. That would make sense. How this motherfucker going to talk when he's ashes? That would be the most elaborate murder scheme. If someone killed him, framed him for a bombing, and then blew up his corpse. Oh, I didn't mean like to frame him for oh, a murder. Okay. I meant like the deep state used him as like just a, a pawn or some shit. Well, apparently he was just like a computer repair guy or some shit. And then he uh, had some unknown vendetta against AT and T or something. It, it seems that like was, that was his problem. AT and T like crossed a line. One too many of those texts saying, "Ooh, you forgot to pay the bill." Holy! Sh- I <laughs> thought he was. See, it made sense if he was going after the comms because, like, we got crazy people thinking that's like how this is going to go down. But uh, just doing it out of spite, you're going to ruin the Wi Fi on Christmas out of spite. That's some. That's worse than the Grinch. Yeah, I don't, I, it doesn't really say other than attack on infrastructure, which I well, don't even know being, if it was that. If they're being that vague, it probably means he hit something specific. Couldn't he have just blown it up without killing himself, though? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, why take yourself out? Well, that's what makes it interesting is... He did all this, which was fairly a- elaborate. He went through the trouble of clearing the area. Unless yeah. that was the ATF or, like, uh, whoever handles explosives these days, clearing the area and just haven't admitted it. But seems he took the time to clear the area. No, the warning, yeah, the w- warning was apparently coming from, like, the RV speakers. Yeah, so. so if he went through all that trouble just to kill himself and, like, fuck up AT&T's day... Uh, that seems a little over the top. It's uh, and he built one hell of a bomb. It was a pretty good bomb. It was a decent sized explosion. Yeah, it's a good thing he he cleared people out because yeah, that'll fuck some shit up. We should form like a super team of suicidal maniacs. Like if we got this guy and the kill dozer guy, uh-huh. uh huh, and maybe a few other weirdos, they really could have done a lot, uh, a lot more together. Like than the, they could do solo. 
like a the Justice League of fucked up villains yeah, who just like a, aren't very good, like the a, dropouts. A suicide squad, if you will. Like the C team? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. The, the G League the, of uh, suicide bombers. The incel suicide squad? So uh, that was the other. This guy is 60 something. Uh huh. Like, what, what the fuck is wrong with. Well, I mean, that's almost as old as the uh, that other shooter was. Who was it? Homeboy in uh, Vegas. Oh, Stephen Paddock. Yeah, he was like in his mid 50s, wasn't he? I think you're right. Yeah, I think he was 55, 60 ish. Yeah, so that makes me think. I mean, if, if this is a patsy, this is a very good way to do it. Maybe all older people just eventually go Ted Kaczynski. Like everyone just grows to hate technology. I think it's just the ones that get to about 50 and don't have like any good things in their life. They did say apparently this dude kind of just worked from home, like even before the uh, the pandemic was going on. He worked from home? Yeah, and they would see him like at the office maybe once a month. I guess when you're building a bomb, you got to spend all your time doing that. When you're building one that big, you do. Yeah, and he ruined his RV. Maybe, maybe he just hated that RV. <laughs> I think that I think he hated that RV because it was his prison. Uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what actually comes out with regards to how he built the explosive. At least the uh, the kill dozer guy got some like interesting footage out of it. He well, had to knock was, down buildings and live a little before. That was really unique. No one's ever really even done that since. No, that guy was uh, one of a kind. Yeah, that took a real uh, lunatic to come up with. He really fucking hated local government. Yeah, but it's very rare for a bomber to not want to fuck people up. Well, it's also rare for a bomb to work. So this is kind of like a weird well, scenario where the guy built a good big bomb but didn't want to hurt anyone with it. Yeah, that's what makes it interesting. Because remember there was that kid in, what, Texas a few years ago who was sending bombs out? The Q-bomber? The one who, like, lived in the van with all nah, the... No, no, no. The one who was sent bombs that worked. Oh, the mail bomb. Yeah, 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 the yeah. mail bomb kid. Like, so those type of dudes usually are looking to make a message with uh, blood. Maybe we finally reached the phase where people are no longer building uh, bunk bombs from the anarchist cookbook. And have I mean, proceeded into legitimate... Uh, Bomb building knowledge. I just watched that uh, that Manhunter, uh, Unabomber, and the new one about the Atlanta bomber. They're pretty accurate. Like if you watch that, you'd probably get the gist of it. <laughs> and it's also not like terribly complicated when you really break it down. It's not super easy, but it's not something anybody couldn't figure out if they wanted to. No, I mean it, it, this guy could just fucking fill his RV with ammunition, and lit it on fire for. All we know so far. Yeah. There like were gunshots before the uh, the explosion, apparently, or at least that was what was being reported. I'd heard that, and I'd also heard that it was possible that the explosion set those off or something. I don't know. But if there was a firefight, there should be footage of that. Well, that's another part that doesn't really make sense. If the guy had a... Why would he have a gun if he was going to die in an explosion? Yeah, well, that's the key question, because, like, did they just manage to hit him in the RV and he went down and died in there and then the bomb went off? Because I don't know if, if he was in the RV, then he probably was planning to die in that. I would imagine so. The whole fucking thing blew up. Because you'd have to run away really quickly to get away from the RV, even if he knew when it was going off. Yeah. So if he was in there, I think he was planning to, you know... Haji that and blow himself up with it. That'd be a real bummer if he was just trying to get out and like tripped over a cable. He fucking just slipped <laughs> just, and like hit his head and passed out for like 15 minutes and just woke up and saw the timer. Two, <laughs> one, fuck. All that work and he didn't think to use a, a remote detonator. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Now, I guess the issue is is whatever's left of him probably is not going to show any bullet wounds. No, I I think they just kind of found uh, smears of the man across the RV, and uh, apparently they cross-checked the DNA with a family member, and that's how they were able to confirm it. Because I guess he was like the only person who showed up on camera when they checked the uh, the time frame from mm -hmm. when like the RV showed up. He was uh, the only dude. Oh, so. I saw some of the anons on Twitter within. It was really quick. It was in like six hours. They'd gone back to, like, Google Maps from 2019 and found basically the same RV, like, at its house. <laughs> and it's like, holy shit, these people are terrifying. Yeah. They, they, They're frighteningly good at this shit now. Maybe that's why he's trying to take out the internet. People have too much access to information. 
Maybe. That would be fascinating if we got another Kaczynski, mostly because, like, Kaczynski was right. Yeah, yeah. As boring as his manifesto was, if you go back and read it, it's uh, astonishingly on point. He has, Minus the whole killing innocent people thing. Yeah, he, he had a few points. His Some of his, his thoughts were pretty good, actually. I, uh, I wish he would have hired an editor. I don't. I, I guess that's not necessarily a luxury when you're a, a serial bomber, but... He also used some retarded ass format, didn't he? He used some like weird 1968 format or something, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think he wrote it like a research paper almost or some shit from what yeah, I remember. I just remember it being the dullest read. Yeah, he's a nerd. It was literally a thesis paper. And then the uh, the fucker in well, Anders Brevik, just like yeah. in his giant manifesto, which also wasn't great, he just straight up plagiarized like whole chunks of of Kaczynski's thing and just like control after did like a find and replace on technology and put like Jews. <laughs> <laughs> well, who do you think makes a technology? Uh, <laughs> I think uh, Anders is actually up for parole or not, I guess not parole, whatever the fuck they do in that country. I think actually, I feel like I remember reading recently a few months ago that he was like one of the few people they denied letting out. Yeah, so I Which think... Which I think is because he was probably like, hey, if I get out, I'm going to do this again. The max sentence there, I think, is 20 years, but what after... What a rad country to kill people in. After a certain amount of time, I think they're allowed to keep extending it by, like, seven-year chunks. See, this is a great part about doing the show without the internet. I can just be wrong. Yeah, we have no idea. No, we're <laughs> we're, we're the, the leaders of misinformation, remember? That's, that's correct. Yeah, I can't fact-check myself, so I have to assume I'm right. Yeah. Ah, uh, I know everything feeling. about Norwegian prison law. Is this why Alex Jones feel like feels like a superhero? Yeah, yeah, maybe that's why he prints out the documents. When you just no longer it no longer matters whether or not you're right or wrong because you're just right regardless. Yeah, information is uh, unimportant. Look, look, I'm not bragging. <laughs> I'm not bragging, folks. I, it is funny though because this is like the third bomber we've had during the Trump era. But this is the first one. That's that, true. Yeah. This is the first one to have a really good bomb go off, but not kill anyone. Because that loser living in his van sent like a fucking acne acne bomb with like <laughs> taped together and a stick of dynamite that was like plastic in it. But he was not gonna work. But the steroids had eaten his brain. Hmm. And then the other kid was pretty good, but they caught him pretty fast. Yeah, that guy was only doing it for like a week. Or so something. someone this good at making bombs would seem to be a serial bomber, but. I don't know. It's a confusing one. Well, once again, the same advice we always give when something like this happens. If you're planning on doing something crazy and killing yourself, just kill yourself. Now, my other favorite conspiracy was that we're actually already in a war, and this was a military operation, but the White Hats won. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, civ the Civil War is apparently already going on, if you didn't know. Wow, we've reached that. The war is going on. It's going on. It's going on. And they're just not telling us? And yeah. we can't see it? Yeah. Invisible warfare. I yeah. like it. Uh, well, you can see it. They're just not giving you the full story because people wouldn't be ready yet. I, I was listening to a, a older episode of Alex Jones, I think yesterday, mm -hmm. and it was it was them just talking about how the Civil War is coming, and then uh, Steve Pachanek was on, and he was talking <laughs> about how uh, Biden was going to Gitmo. Fuck and yeah, bro. You remember when he broke his ankle and we were like, well, how long until someone says he's going to Gitmo? Oh, I knew that shit was coming. That's exactly what Pachetic said. He Fuck was like, yeah. you see that ankle oh, ankle yeah. brace? That's uh, He's got an ankle bracelet under it. Look, if Steve Pachetic dies, I'm taking his place because I can, I can come up with that bullshit. I know exactly how that man is going to respond every time. Poor Steve Pachetic. I think even Alex has sort of backed off of him. I, I've heard conflicting things. I really hope he would, but unfortunately, Pachenik's going to say all the good stuff about the Donald that Alex really only wants to hear right now. He's too deep in the fight to hear reason. Speaking of which, there was, uh, he did, he started a new show to replace David Knight. Oh, already? Called, I, I did read that he cut off whoever his late night show was. Yeah. And uh, one of the quotes was, it was because uh, she was getting her ass kicked by Tucker. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> Which like, I was like, Jesus, Alex, you think this broad's going to beat Tucker? Like, you, maybe. Yeah, no one's tuning into Bandot video over Fox. I wonder if he would ever make that plunge and be like, fuck the radio show, I'm going prime time. Well, so this new, the morning show he's doing, I think he kind of got caught up in this because apparently 
he he read something on air from like two weeks ago uh-huh. where uh, he had sent out like ads to local TV stations saying like, this is our lineup of shows. Do you want to, you know, start carrying the InfoWars uh-huh. line of shows? I think he got the whole lineup picked up on a few networks, but then he fired David Knight. So he didn't actually have a morning show to give him. So he's doing well, that. Alex, you know, who will wake up at the crack of dawn. We will. Which, which camera um, you're, you're there. Yeah. But yes, he, so it's a, it's a new show called like America talk or some shit. <laughs> and it's supposed to just be him taking phone calls the whole time. But the first episode was, uh, it was the first day, like after David Knight got fired, I think. Uh. So all anyone wanted to talk about is like, where the fuck is David Knight? <laughs> and by the end of the episode, Alex was fucking furious. <laughs> like <laughs> the the third or fourth person who called in and asked about it, like, oh, we got to stop talking about this. <laughs> Look, folks, we got to move on. All right, they were, we're in a war. Well, the thing, his story on why he fired David Knight changed like five times during the course of the episode oh yeah they mentioned that in that article i read the other day about it yeah it went from like well david looked like he needed a break he was working too hard and then went to like well david didn't agree with a lot of stuff we were doing it was like well david was getting paid too much money <laughs> so he said something bad about the president my favorite was uh that alex's son was trying to leave because of criticizing the president i still find that so fucking funny did you see, you saw the, the Rogan interview with him, the one they did on InfoWars oh, yeah, from yeah, a yeah. few weeks back? Yeah, yeah, Where Alec was, Alex was talking about having, like, psychic visions. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. <laughs> it was, oh, God, it was so good. He's so close to breaking back in the right direction. He's, if, he's right on the cusp of going full crazy again. I'm this, That's why I'm kind of concerned that they're going to really do some wild shit here in a week with, uh, with the Donald. Because if, if Alex could just get out of this without instigating a war <laughs> i really think he could be back into the the mainstream he didn't look good at that march the other day he no looked, he uh, hasn't looked good the last like month and a half he's really he's in this shit man he's in it he looked really red and bloated yeah he's getting fat again and i think he was wearing a bulletproof vest i'm gonna hope that was a bulletproof vest otherwise well i hope the he man is. is misshapen i hope he is wearing a bulletproof <laughs> vest first of all but he is getting fat again yes walking around with his bullhorn yelling you, at people you can tell when he's been on one because he gets the neck fat yes his neck is abnormally big well it just it gets like a frog it, it gets bloated and rounded but it, you know he was lifting his like lifting his arms up at one of the rallies and it that belly was starting to poke out a little bit. Well, I mean, he even did the, the commercial on InfoWars the other week where it's like, people are asking me with all my supplements, oh, how come yeah. I'm so fat? Why am I so fat? Well, sometimes <laughs> I forget to take my own supplements. I don't think that's what it is. I don't think you forget to take a pill. Unless by supplements he means just like diet pills that he eats by the fistful. Well, I also don't think it's a coincidence the man stopped drinking and started working out and he looked much better and then he stopped doing that and now he looks like shit again. Honestly, if Joe just makes him go hunting again, that's probably enough exercise to make him not be fat. But uh, he seems to be putting a far too many chips in on this uh, run here. I haven't seen much talk about overthrowing the election in the last week, at least compared to previous weeks. This this has actually been like the first week. This is probably the first time actually I've ever really felt like he's, the Donald has got the opportunity to do some shit that could really get wild here and i say that mostly because sydney powell's been back the last few days even though people are pretty much begging him not to let her in the door but she's <laughs> back again with rudy but more importantly and this is the man who concerns me most is michael flynn because that's a three-star general who actually knows how this works and uh if he tells donald a little too much of this and the donald drinks a little too much of this kool-aid he might just go fuck it i think i can win well, as we discussed, Michael Flynn is fully off the reservation. That yeah. dude's gone. He's, like, fully leading into the Q-ship. Yeah, I mean, and they they love him. Like, I don't really knock him for that because those people gave him a ton of money and helped him get out of jail. And he was getting fucked by the FBI. Like, I won't oh, I knock that. They fucked him good. But, yeah, it concer- he's the only one who concerns me. Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood at that shit, like, they're just crazy. I don't really mind them. Uh, Although we we saw a dry run this week, right? That was this week. Uh, the people in Oregon, uh, a, a little bit. That was yeah. uh, 
So we there was I, those I people in Oregon who tried to what was it the courthouse or something it was or the, the state building? I think it was like the state house or some yeah, shit. Yeah. So they, they a bunch of armed protesters showed up, uh, got into the door. They so there were a few stages. They eventually breached one of the doors, held it open, made it into like the first room, but couldn't get past the next door because that's where the cops were. They also got lit up with some. Uh, Pepper balls. That was when eventually the cops pushed him out, and then I think one of the protesters tried to mace the cops, and then the cops just unleashed on him. I don't remember if the cops unleashed first, but a lot of pepper spray came out, and yeah, those protesters got fucked, and then they got hit with some pepper balls, and then we listened in live time to a lot of people on the right realize that the cops aren't so good sometimes. The cops aren't the best. It was hilarious to listen to. It was also hilarious how quickly they gave up the revolution. Like they showed up oh, and they were yeah. talking about how is this is the march on Jericho. We're gonna we're gonna pray. Oh, the the fucking the spontaneous pledge of allegiances they were oh, doing. Oh God, it was so funny. Before they they lost their spirit, they would just randomly be uh, standing outside the yeah. building and break into the pledge of allegiance. Yeah, it would just go quiet and then just. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag. And then oh. everyone would join in. It was like uh, the way for retarded patriots. It was so, so cringy. It was awful. But yes, the the actual uh, the siege upon the house lasted five minutes. And uh, it You know, I'll give them a little more credit. After they got kicked out of their initial push, they tried like two more times. Someone tried to get into a window, but none of them were successful. And then after that... I think they were all just so disappointed that the police let them down. They were like it was just it was it wasn't even anger. It was just genuine like disappointment. They were mind blown that the cops didn't let them just waltz in there with their guns. It was honestly like a kid finding out Santa Claus isn't real. Yeah, they <laughs> all the all the people like. Listen, I usually like the cops. <laughs> oh, but. they were so that like they didn't know how to say it because they were like, man. I like cops, I support the police, but I don't know. And even that, just saying I don't know was enough to get people like, oh, fuck you, yeah. you fucking Black Lives Matter piece of shit. <laughs> Antifa. Yeah, it was it was wild to, to hear it in real time. It's one of the beauties of the internet still. Yeah, it was uh, live streaming shitty revolutions. But yeah, that really fell apart. And I actually think that kind I mean, Owen was so mad. Holy shit, was Owen mad Everyone about that. was mad. But uh, I actually think that was kind of the moment that might have pushed some of these people to realize it might take their own physical violence to do this because the Supreme Courts have failed. Uh, now the police have failed. The guns are still going to work. Did they ever come out and say what they were planning on doing if they actually got into the building? No, I think literally the plan was just to get inside. I don't know. I think there was some sort of vote that was supposed to be taking place and they wanted they to were sit doing, in on it or some shit. I think they were doing something about the electors. One, everybody involved was in a different room and they were just doing it over Zoom. Uh, so I, I assume they wanted to just watch. I don't know. I, I can't think they actually would have believed they like would have been able to change their vote. You show up without masks uh, and weapons, be like, no, yeah. let us in where all the elective representatives are. No, no, you don't understand. <laughs> he doesn't count. I count. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think they really had a plan after getting inside. Which made me feel better about the possibility of uh, squashing a revolution. Uh, Is if they can't even pull off one small mission properly, I don't well, think they're going to be able to do the, the full thing. In their credit, nobody shot anybody. They also didn't accomplish anything. Yeah, that's because they didn't shoot anybody. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing. Like, I will give them credit because there were a lot of people there with a lot of big guns armed to the teeth, and nobody managed to shoot anyone. So that's at least we still have a touch of self-control. I believe that's called being a pussy. Probably. If, if I, Antifa did that, they would 100% be calling them pussies. I don't think any of them came prepared thinking they would have to fight the cops. They were... They thought the cops were, were patriots. Uh... But it really are some dumb motherfuckers. But it's that I combined with a few other things where I think they've finally gotten to the point where they're just I think they're just ready to bro down. Well, we've got what today is. Here's a, the thing. We'll know. The 27th. We I think we finally have a date where we'll know if this is real or not, because they have to do it on January 5th and 6th 
Yep. And he has that big ass rally he's doing on the six. And there's a at this point I would say there's probably like a thirty percent chance that rally essentially turns into a declaration of whatever civil war is gonna be. Hear that or there's also the chance like a thousand people show up and it's just a huge flop. Nah, I don't see that. I could see him potentially trying to talk them down and maybe saying we're going to go there, but he's been tweeting this cross the Rubicon shit and <laughs> poor, like photos of him just looking at uh, Abraham Lincoln, just all serious and shit. Just, I'd look better than that. <laughs> he, he's, uh, fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, My other favorite one, they got one of him looking at a Winston Churchill <laughs> and it's just these really strange photos and it's like, does he even know who that is? Like, does he know who Winston Churchill is? I don't, I kind of doubt it, to be honest. That's what I was, he was, uh. It'd be funny if the caption was like, right before this, he asked, hey, do you know who that is? <laughs> I make a better photo. Yeah. So he, he pardoned everyone this week. Oh, he's getting it on. He pardoned someone earlier today. Uh, I think it was some black dude who was in jail for life for selling weed or some he shit. He was a hip hop producer, producer, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think Snoop Dogg had, had asked uh, for assistance with that. He also pardoned those four Blackwater guys. That is another one of the things that concern me, because if I needed a militia to start a civil war... Blackwater's not bad. And we're talking about when people go, well, we still have the army. They're not going to beat the army. Blackwater could can stand toe-to-toe with the army. Blackwater is pretty much... All of our best soldiers get paid twice as much to go work at Blackwater. You know what? So uh, that was the other one where I was like, Oh, if you put uh, Michael Flynn in charge of the Blackwater mercenaries, that's a pretty solid General Lee in the Confederacy. Someone needs to start a conspiracy that this is a plan to kill conservatives. They they I want them to is. start a civil war in order to kill off conservatives. No, no, not saying that they say that the Democrats are going to kill conservatives if Joe Biden gets into office. <laughs> Don't you understand? There's going to be re-education camps and gas chambers, bro. That'd be great. I wouldn't mind. I, at this point, I'll go hang out in a re-education camp. Fuck it. I have no firm beliefs one way or the other. I can mold to a communist society. Yeah, no, I'll I'm just, fine. <laughs> actually, I'll just probably go live off the grid with the pot pirates. I'll go back to them. Yeah, we can just go chill with them. Yeah, no Wi-Fi. What the, <laughs> what the fuck is Wi-Fi? <laughs> but yeah, the across the Rubicon stuff is like, man, if there's one person I could see talking themselves into like, maybe I was born for this, it's <laughs> Donald Trump because he could talk himself into thinking like, I have to lead this war. Sort of a manifest destiny? Yeah. Not that he thought this going in, but I think he might talk himself into it right now. It's a way to guarantee yourself a place in the history books. Yeah. If, now, you, if you try and... That's what I'm saying. Like, if he decides, like, well, they're going to hate me anyways, I might as well go big or go home. Yeah. This he, is really big or go home, because if you do this and lose, they're going to kill you. He was in wrestling. He knows how to make a splash. Now, I hope he just pardons uh, Snowden and... Uh, Assange, because those dudes probably got a few secrets they can still tell. The Stone just had a kid, too. Yeah, I think he'd love to raise that kid in a country where they don't kill journalists. <laughs> Yet. I don't know if that's going to happen. All right, this, uh, pivoting off of that, this was something from early in the week. Uh, Walmart is getting sued by the, uh... Fun. DOJ. Fun. For, uh, the opioid crisis, basically. The, the DOJ is asserting that, uh, Walmart filled... Uh, a fuckload of prescriptions that probably weren't legitimate, or at least... Knowingly or unintentionally? They say knowingly. Walmart, of course, says unintentionally. Walmart says they didn't want the pharmacist to get in between uh, the doctor and the patient. Because it is always very easy to just say, well, I don't know. I didn't check. It's not a crime to be stupid. I I think part of the problem was is uh, a lot of it would be people from like different parts of the state coming five hours to fill a prescription somewhere. Yeah. That's a bit, that's a bit suspicious. Yeah. And apparently that was a fairly commonplace. Oh, uh, this is the first major chain pharmacy I've seen get caught up in the opioid shit in terms of uh, it being blamed on them. I've seen sort yeah. of one off like pain clinics and shit get, uh, I guess that's cause heat. I guess that's cause the chains usually have some better built in mechanisms to, monitor people picking up prescriptions like that? You would think so. Because the mom and pops are super easy to play. But it varies from site to site. Like, I knew someone when I was in pharmacy school, I knew someone who worked at a Walmart, but it was in, like, the middle of nowhere, and they didn't even have, uh, like, the 
they're called script pros, which are like machines that dispense controlled substances. Mm -hmm. They just kept all the Oxycontin in like a <laughs> shitty safe in the back room. And I, I guess they have, so the thing is, if you don't use a script pro, you have to double count all, uh, all prescriptions for controlled substances to make sure you're giving out the right amount. So I, that seems like a fucking waste of money. Yeah. To yeah, double your amount of work because you don't want to buy a script pro. It really does. I guess no wonder robots are going to replace that. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's just counting pills and doing it again. Double checking. Yeah. You, you got double count. I do wonder if they're using this to set precedent to go after like a CVS. It could be. Uh, well, because if one of them didn't, I would assume, or did it, I would assume the others probably did as well. You they think all so. Don't they all pretty much use the same systems? Uh, I for the, the think so, for the most chains? part. Target is another store. A lot of the people I knew who worked at Target also did not have access to, like, the Script Pro machines. Hmm. So, I don't know. Uh, it's... I think they may just be going after, like, the biggest pharmacy. Uh, I'm pretty sure Walmart is, like, one of the largest distributors of drugs in the country. Government's got to collect some money somehow. We are, we're really deep in the hole. You know what that marks, though, is it's, it's officially an end of an era. Yeah. This, the, is, this is it for getting high on uh, prescription drugs, Yeah, the, or at least opiates. The legal opioid crisis is over. The illegal one will continue to rage on until we realize China's killing us by the gram. We had a good run, though. It, it lasted from like 2000-ish until about five years ago, six years ago, maybe. Look, the opioid epidemic has gone beyond the crack epidemic. It's rather impressive. It put up some real numbers in probably like a 12-ish year time frame, 12, 14 years, maybe. Like, did anyone even think it was realistic something would top crack? <laughs> did we ever think that was possible? No, it... Uh... I feel like this is this is really something no one saw coming. We thought crack was as bad as it could get. We could thank uh, Purdue Pharma for uh, <laughs> the extended release Oxycontin. The beautiful, uh, what is it, Sackler family? Uh, or I guess I, should, I think it's continuous release. That's why it's Oxycontin. But, but yeah, yeah, though I'm, I'm, they got hit with what a billion dollar fine. I think it was more than that. I think it might have been two billion. They really should have just been like, no, we take all your money. You get to be poor the rest of your life. That or, seems like a real. That's a punishment. If you took a billionaire and were like, no, you're poor the rest of your life, that sucks. I would ask for payment in pills. <laughs> <laughs> the government just wants what's fucking uh, oxycotton by yeah, the by the pound. I want ten billion dollars worth of oxycotton, which I think is like five pills at this point. It's, it's so <laughs> fucking expensive. Well, yeah, if you want to get something that's not going to fucking kill you. All right, you know how some people have, like, the buy gold schemes? Like, all yeah. conspiracy shows do, oh, like, you oh, got to buy... The QAnons love buying gold. You got to buy gold because, uh, you know, the, the global economic thing is going to uh, collapse and we'll be left and somehow gold will be valuable. Yeah, no, not food, the shiny shit. We need to start lean and prescription pills. I'd give... I, uh, can we start a petition to get lean legalized again? Because well, that shit rules. That shit's worth its like weight. It's probably yeah. worth more than gold. Oh, it's retarded expensive now because it's incredibly hard to get. Well, what's uh, activists stop making it? Maybe they're they back all, to making it. I then. think they all stopped making it because I think they made. Didn't they make that illegal? Like a while nationwide. Ago, yeah. Well, I think they were looking into At least activists. over the counter. Yeah, an activist kind of just stopped making it. Like, it just was no longer worth the trouble. They probably actually just had a bunch of illegal shit and were like, you can stop or <laughs> we can look further. It's your choice. It wouldn't shock me. I'm but, sure they just had, like, a pipeline to fucking E-40 in the uh, Bay, Area, Bay Area in fucking Atlanta. Well, for a while, those, like, uh, not pint, but, like, the bigger, they call the them. The 16s? They used to call them bricks, uh, like the bigger bottles. The 16s, right? Uh, I or think it's the, bigger than 16. The it's probably, yeah, it's probably like 32-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the pharmacy bottles? Those were going for like two grand, 2500 Oh, yeah. It was more expensive than heroin. And initially, those used to go for like 300 bucks. Yeah. Oh, I still love, I remember when uh, all the rappers realized pretty much at the same time, like, wait, this is heroin? <laughs> you mean we're drinking heroin? And then- uh, It only it? took like, what, 15 people dying for them to be like, eh. I think there's something in this. Yeah, and everyone being horribly addicted. That's killing us. Boosie, like, fucking ruining his kidneys. Schoolboy Q getting fat. Yeah, well, Danny Brown, too. Danny yeah, Brown got Danny fat. Brown got fat. Everybody got fat. That's the thing about heroin. You can get fat on it. Well, they said it was just because <laughs> they were drinking so much goddamn soda, which I believe. I think Danny Brown said he was drinking, like, three liters of cream soda a day just with the lean, which is 
and that's like Jesus. 2,000 calories a day just off soda. Yeah, that's a lot of soda even for me. I do love a good cream soda, though. Especially mixed with drugs. That's that true. sounds like a good combo. It's true. You know what? I'm not going to criticize Danny. I'm just happy he's not dead. We need to uh, make a trip to Mexico and come back with, with Mexican lean. El uh, lean. Do they have that in Mexico? I highly doubt it. <laughs> it's probably just like poisoned. I actually was thinking the other day, just to go back to Christmas for a second since we're on the topic of lean. Of course. How come the black Israelites never claim Santa Claus? In what way? Like just that he's as black. they're oh <laughs> uh I bet they do. I bet if we looked, do they, they would claim that Chris Kringle is black. Because if they believe in Santa Claus, that'd be funny. Oh shit, you're probably right. Maybe they can't believe in in a, well, if he's black, they can believe in him. What if there is there Although like what, a, what what black man is gonna survive in the fucking winter in the ice in the North Pole? Like that's it's, not gonna happen. It's not a job for a black man. No, no. It's it's, not, that's not Detroit cold. That's a different level of cold. Plus, they don't like reindeer. No. <laughs> I could uh, I could go for a Santa dressed up in the crazy Egyptian garb, though. Like I, the, I, the ridiculous headdress and the fucking the flowing robes. That could be interesting, like fucking the Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa garb going on. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking it would be funny if they did like a Ocean's Eleven uh, sequel where like Santa Claus has to come in as like a B&E man because he's so good at breaking into houses and they need him to like... I don't know, Rob the Statue of Liberty or some shit. Did that movie with Mel Gibson already come out? Fat yeah. Man? That I just reminded it, me of that. I think it did, but I haven't seen it yet. No, neither have I. But I like this. I like the theme of uh, Santa Claus Gone Bad. Santa Claus got a record. All right, speaking of things gone bad, uh, let's see if I can get this to load. Switching to the uh, pseudo space weirdo news. This is space weirdo adjacent. The, uh, right. t- the To the Stars Academy. Oh, yeah. We had... A few days ago, Luis Elizondo, Chris Melton, and Steve Justice all left. And Luis Elizondo's quote was, uh, My mission was always to push disclosure forward. I think we've done that. To the Stars Academy focuses on entertainment. Myself, Chris, and Justice aren't entertainers. Time has come to shift into second gear. Huh. So it seems like uh, Mr. Tom DeLonge may want to make uh, a few movies Based on his books, and everyone else is kind of... Well, what the fuck did they think Tom DeLonge was going to bring to this? They thought the dude from Blink-182 <laughs> was going to like, no, guys, I have some really good that, thoughts on how we could engineer these ships. That whole story just doesn't make sense to me, that the the government selected... Oh, it makes total sense. He's an idiot. He's rich. He's dumb. He likes aliens. Like, he let's also, use him. He was also well past his prime, though. That's what I mean. He's desperate. He's got nothing else to do. He's a perfect... Uh, person they could use when did to the stars start like 2013 ish somewhere there no, no, i think it was a little newer than that isn't it, it was like 2015 2016 so yeah uh, blink 182 had not been popular for at least a decade at that point he's not even the popular member of blink 182 <laughs> yeah, it's travis barker now he's the least popular member of his own band yeah, travis barker's fucking doing songs with mgk i think he just put out a whole like ep with mgk not that long ago well, MGK better, and uh, Young Blood. Better him than Tom DeLonge. Yeah. So I I don't know what Tom's going to do if Tom's just trying to make money. Is... He's probably going to fucking go back into obscurity. Poor Tom. Because uh, he didn't, uh, I guess maybe he'll write another shitty book. I mean, I'm sure he's he's probably made enough money. He should write a new book where the UFOs leave him because he they didn't want to make his movies. He, uh, he should sue the Sackler family because I think he was addicted to Vicodin. That would be hilarious. Loop you lost me around. my UFO connections because yeah. of your pills. <laughs> they don't tolerate drug addicts. No, that's that's not acceptable in the UFO community. Well, moving on to my other favorite fuck up. Uh, more news has come out about Prince Andrew. Yes. Our dude, demand, party prince. Uh, so apparently, Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell attended the royal family's Dance of the Decades at Windsor Can- Castle as special guest of Prince prince andrew on june 21st 2000 dailymail.com is another unearthed a souvenir booklet from the party which lists pedophile epstein and his alleged madam among the star-studded guests he wasn't listed as a pedophile in the booklet was he i hope so like, they don't they specify it, <laughs> but i really wish they would they put everyone's professions like donald trump mogul jeffrey epstein renowned pedophile that would be funnier if she just put what <laughs> dirt she had on him in there yeah. so they knew 
I saw uh, some photos came out the other day. I guess they're probably old, but it was Paris Hilton with uh, those two, with uh, Ghislaine and Epstein. I guess Trump was there also. I mean, look, they they seem to have thrown some pretty cool parties. Well, and maybe Paris Hilton was involved with it. She was abused as a kid. I watched her shitty documentary the other day. Yeah. Where she, she got sent out to like uh, some camp for troubled youth when she was like 14 or whatever. And of course, they just abused all the kids. <laughs> no, parents never learn that that shit, it does not work. That's if your pretty kid's much in a boarding how, school, someone's trying to fuck them. I mean, that's pretty much how it always ends. They're trapped there. They can't report it to anybody else. I mean, it's like prison. You don't send all the bad kids to go hang out with each other. They're only going to learn how to do more bad shit. Yeah, all the kids that their parents don't want to watch. Or they're going to get drug tested, so they have to switch to using bizarre drugs. Like trying to smoke banana peels oh, yeah. and shit. Weird spice or some shit that they managed to <laughs> smuggle in off Amazon or something. Yeah, that, that shit just never, it never pans out. Anyways, I'm sorry. But uh, no, so this was yet another uh, deep tie to the party prince. And I was wondering, uh, so what are the odds he makes it through 2021 without either A, giving up a few big folk uh, to the U.S. and then saying like he was conned or something into it and apologizing profusely, <laughs> uh, it's a B, safe bet. B, he gets caught doing all sorts of illegal shit with pictures and videos and whatnot uh, with Epstein and Ghislaine and then just goes down crying like a bitch and they fucking throw the book at him. Ooh. And then C, he mans up and hangs himself off the Big Ben Tower, regaining <laughs> all respect he had lost in life. Unfortunately, who's too fat for the rope to work? He was. It's hard to tie a chain link fence into a knot. Well, he'll get one of the guards to tie it for him. Uh, I think most likely I see him as a man who flips. I I would too, because I think if he flips, he can at least then have them take uh, too much of the blow off him. Well, when you have that much power, you can get away with uh, a bit more. And if you're willing to play ball and pay a fuckload of money for your lawyers, he can, he can probably get out of this with almost no repercussions. Well, I had also read that there's pretty much no way anybody in the royal family will let him have any path to redemption without him first talking to the authorities. At this point, I like, how old is he? He's 50-something? No, I think he, I think we looked this up. I think he's in his 60s. Oh, shit. Like, not late 60s. I think he's in his, like, early 60s At this point, you, you're gonna fucking be dead in 20 years. Just ride this out. Not as a royal <laughs> fucking prince. Prince Charles is 99 and the queen is 94. The, if you don't make it to 100 mm, as a royal, something went wrong. The hemophilia and uh, pedophilia, ironically enough, will catch up with him, though. Hey, I think it's gonna shorten his life. Energy vampires don't do it for no reason. Oh, maybe that's why the queen has to do all that raping. That is it is going to be, what if they lose both of them, like, in back-to-back -back days? They're so fucking old. I mean, the queen's on a running clock. Like, she can't. I don't know. She looks okay. Prince Charles looks like a corpse they keep reanimating every day. All right, she doesn't look okay. She's just looked the same for well, five decades. But by that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> yeah, she doesn't she, look any different than she has for the last 50 years. Didn't it come out they just used, like, a CGI queen for their, uh... No, no, no. That was someone posted, someone on BBC posted, like, a deep fake of the queen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To show how, like, it could be used to mislead people. Uh, Although it's still not. It wasn't a great deep fake. Well, it's just not there yet. Like, it's it's not quite. You can still tell something's not right. It's it, very, very close. Yeah, it doesn't quite pass the I'm eye sure, test. I'm sure in another two or three years, it'll definitely get there. I can't wait until we get Queen Elizabeth the deep fake porn. It's oh. going to be a great, <laughs> great day. I mean, I think once those are realistic, that might like, end porn for the most part. Haven't they already tried to pass laws that kind of, like, uh, don't allow that? Well, if you're using a real person, but if you just generate faces, pretty much, <laughs> you can just mix them in and out. You know how uh, the, the college, like, football and basketball video games can't actually use the player's likeness? Yeah, well, shit. those video <laughs> games can't even come out anymore. Although yeah. they're working on bringing them back, they just... uh might have to pay people. I think that's what they're going to do for deep fake foreign. Is they're going to have someone who looks exactly like the person you're looking for. They're just going to be assigned a number or some shit. They have all the attributes. They just won't be able to uh, explicitly state who they are. Speaking of porn, after I found out that uh, that Belle Delphine chick makes $1.2 million a month, I was thinking, like, are we finally headed to a future where paying for porn comes back into vogue? 
Well, so because like, is that like, is your OnlyFans like the the ones you subscribe to going to become like something you like put on your fucking uh, social media profile? Not to be a man who's uh, too knowledgeable about porn, but she did just put out her first uh, full fucking video well, on why, Christmas. That's why I wanted to see how high her number had gotten to. Because yeah, one point two mil is. Ooh, she get to suck dick for five years and then retire. And now we're going to play that video on stream. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a great video. I always feel disappointed. Like, listen, I watch all these for research. I, I haven't jerked off to the Paris Hilton tape, the Kim K tape, or this tape. It's purely uh, academic pursuit. You got to watch the footage. You have to review it. How I, else could you understand what was going on? You know, maybe she had a deeper message. Well, there's... Uh, there's certain shit that when it comes out, you just have to check it out or, or you're missing an important cultural moment. Well, I got to know what they're paying 1.2 mil a month for. She wasn't great. It wasn't great. That's what makes it even more impressive. And uh, Is OnlyFans what feminism always wanted to be? Kind of. Because like it's, it's kind of along my the same body, my choice. <laughs> philosophical line is these men are all pieces of shit, but they'll pay for anything. So might as well make a lot of money off them. And a lot. There was uh, there were some people, she's got her own subreddit, and the amount of disdain those guys have for her well, is fucking hilarious considering what the, they're trying to do. Either them or like the, the people who worship her. They crack me up too. Yeah, so the, these guys were talking about- She's fat. Yeah, yeah. It was like, that. And it's like, you. I'm not paying for these fucking videos. It's like, who's got the link? Like, Neither am I, but I'm not going to go on the website just to say it. I know that it's free somewhere. Yeah, somewhere on the internet it will be archived. But I'm not a lonely fuck that has to go tell everybody else. You shouldn't- uh, I bet those are just women. Uh, it's possible. Because women uh, are very mean to other women. Especially ones who do porn and make a lot of money doing it. Yeah, because I really, I have to I have to doubt the fact that a, a man saw that and was like, she's fat. <laughs> no, no, you're you're jerking off the second you see it. Yeah. But a woman would see that and go like, mm, she's fat. I, uh, the guys who become like the, the porn connoisseurs, I miss that about the Pornhub comments too, when people used to like criticize the camera work. Yeah, and those are the those are some of the creepiest people the on this pe planet. The people who are watching porn for the production, the people who comment, no, the people who comment on it. Whoever takes <laughs> the time to comment on porn, those people are fucking weird. <laughs> that is a uh, it's a think of what you have to stop doing to to write that comment. Well, it's also what are you looking to accomplish? I get commenting on YouTube. You can talk to the person who made the video. Like it, you, they'll read it and probably respond to you. I guess you can do that a little bit. Well, maybe not if they get rid of all the amateur porn. But if you're, well, if your comments just like, oh, my dick's so hard. Like, that, oh, I'd fuck her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, what now? Thanks, bro. You really felt the need to write that down for us all? No, we can we can do this live on air. Let me go to, uh, I got to make sure I'm not pointing my phone at the camera. That'll get ahead. us pulled real quick. You can bring that on. I'll read, I'll read this quick little blurb from uh, the good old Minister Farrakhan. All who, right. Uh, his really not helping the vaccine by uh, he went out and told all of his followers not to get the vaccine and called it the white man's death plan, <laughs> which bars, man, white man death plan. If we're being honest, the black community is the only one who has a real legit reason to be concerned. That whole uh, Tuskegee thing really fucked him over that. AIDS, crack, you know, we really use them as guinea pigs quite a bit. Yeah. So I'll give them a little bit more of a pass. But I don't know how that works when all the newspapers are like, well, this is hurting uh, communities of color more than anyone else. Like, well, then you better fucking convince them to take it because <laughs> I don't think they're going to. See, this is this is how I'm going to start. I'm just going to start doing counter conspiracies. Uh, uh, like Farrakhan is doing this intentionally to kill black people. Can that, we just start accusing everyone of the thing they're trying to claim they're not? I mean, I guess he maybe unintentionally could. He will. Like, it'll it'll probably kill people. I mean, yeah, it'll kill the old folk and those vitamin D deficient, apparently. Uh, with that said, I am still waiting for, uh, I, I want to see some people like five months after taking the vaccine. Oh, I'm going to let everybody else take it because there's obviously some concerned folk and I'm a good person. I don't mean to brag, but I'm going to let everybody else take it first. 
and then if they're still alive in six months, I'll still let them take it a second time before I do because I'm that good a person. I, uh, I do the same thing with big video game releases so I don't get burned. Like, Cyberpunk came out, and it's a, a fucking mess. You can, it's it unplayable if, on if, PlayStation. Yeah, if you couldn't get one of the new consoles, yeah, it's so, unfortunate. And I wanted to make a video about the penis so bad. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't watch, or I didn't buy it at first because I... There were rumors that it might not be so great, so now I'll get to, to pick it up later down the line when it's been fixed, and I plan on doing the same thing with the vaccine. Twitch not hidden in plain sight. I haven't <laughs> made it yet. No. Uh, all right, it is, before we, we move on, let me... Uh, I'm just on the Gone Wild subreddit. Uh, let's read some of the top comments. So glad I saw this post. Your posts are great. Followed. What a fag. Uh, <laughs> I missed you so much for 14 days. You should post more often. You are amazing. Ugh. 100 emoji, fire emoji, hard eye emoji. Can I DM you a question, please? <laughs> sure, I get a lot of DMs, so I may miss it. <laughs> that's that's uh, her saying she's not going to respond. Oh, she actually responded. She responded to say she's not going to respond? Pretty much. That's that's cold. No, that is what I call divine beauty. No. <laughs> oh. oh, Jesus Christ. Utter perfection as ever. Winky smiley face. Wow. Ooh. Always stunning. Flower emoji. Okay. All looks tasty. Ugh. I so wish I could eat your pussy. <laughs> That's a man who's straight to the point. Hey, All at, right. least, at least he's shooting his shot. He's not beating around the bush. He's uh, He's straight... Straight to the meat and potatoes. You know, that that's one thing I will say with OnlyFans is at least you do get the vague illusion of interacting with the porn star. Yeah, yeah, you get to pretend like they, they text you their videos and shit. Yeah, they have like a chat and whatnot. But I, who was it? I think it was Daily Beast even had an article that was like, how to become the next big porn star. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Be a hot chick. It's like, we're, you don't even need to be that hot, man. Just mildly attractive and willing to do all sorts of crazy. You're willing to do some weird shit. This is why I think it's got a chance to bring back paid porn. Because if you can do super niche shit and dudes get tired of having to browse... Maybe there's an avenue there. I mean, I guess that's that's the lane they've opened up for themselves is they can't do hyper specific tailored to individual uh, taste requests. Yeah. So I like was, the video can have them saying your name and shit. Yeah. Well, and she does like her weird like anime shit and whatnot. So like I, I it dawned on me mostly because of how much fucking money she's making that is insane. Do you think uh, we can start paying them to do the intro to the show? Like, f fuck Cameo. Let's get a bunch of weird OnlyFans people. I will to, gladly to say the name of the show. I will gladly let OnlyFans chicks comes on come on the pod and do our <laughs> intro. <laughs> we'll have to find some that are reasonable because I can't afford. Uh, I don't think I can afford her. No, that's uh, that's fuck. That's a lot of money. Hey, I would more I, power to them. Even if I was her father, I'd be proud. Well, as I've probably mentioned it before, I read uh, Jenna Jameson's book, which is a shockingly good read. But her, how mad do you think she is seeing all the numbers these girls are bringing in? You know what? I think she actually did well enough for herself because she That's was like true. on the last peak of porn. She was the last like actual porn star star. Yeah, but her her father in the book said like, if my daughter's gonna fuck on camera, I want her to be the best. Hey, that's which I guess I, is supportive. That's how I would do it. I'd go, you're making how much, honey? Oh, good for you. I'll fucking suck that dick, too, if they'll pay me that much. For a quarter million a month, I'd, I'd be okay with my kid doing just about anything. You, no, for 1.2 million a month. Well, wow, that's Belle Delphine. Not everyone's oh. got uh, Belle Delphine money. I don't even think she's number one. No, I think she is. She has to be by, like, a decent amount. Uh, in terms of revenue, I'm not sure. She was selling her bathwater, man. Come on. Uh, that was my, she's actually made some pretty brilliant moves. The bathwater and now selling used condoms, especially <laughs> for the pr the condoms that like she gets fucked with, like that's disgusting. But that is All parts of the buffalo. That is capitalism, literally at its finest. Ugh, just some fucking disgusting fat pig is buying yeah, those and I drinking hope, them. I hope she immediately sends that address to the FBI. Along with it, because that yeah. person is probably a risk. Maybe that's what this is. This is a bizarre blackmail operation where everyone's just going to have their fetishes exposed. That would be interesting. It would. Be, it's working, I think. It's definitely working. I'm going to keep my streak alive, though. There's several things uh, as an adult that I've never... I've never bought lotto tickets. I've never paid for porn. 
I got to go buy my lotto ticket today. And pay for porn. It's the lotto ticket day. Why is not? It? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm going to go buy a lotto ticket have today. Have you ever bought a lotto ticket before? Or is the uh, desperate times call for desperate measures? 18. Uh, that was the only time you bought one? Yeah. Not, it's a weird year. Look, if there was ever a year I'm going to fucking win the lottery, it's probably this year. That's true. Throw it out into the universe. It's a but weird fucking year. Why not? Worst that could happen is you're out a few bucks. Yeah, and I'm going to let this city crumble, and then I'm going to buy it all up when it's done. <laughs> All right, moving on to one of our other favorite subjects. We got some new Bigfoot news. All right, Bigfoot. Uh, so let's see. Brian Sykes, professor of human genetics at Oxford University, put out a worldwide call for Bigfoot samples, such as hair, that he can subject to the most sophisticated DNA tests available, the most ambitious Bigfoot DNA analysis ever seen. Uh, Sykes, when are they going to learn about this? Every time they do Bigfoot DNA analysis, it just ends up being like rabbit shit. We'll get there. It's <laughs> okay. sort yeah, of okay. interesting. This So this is a legit scientist exploring this, so he's not coming in necessarily thinking he's going to find like the spiritual guardian of the planet or oh, some okay. shit. Uh, Sykes believes his DNA tests are 100%. He has previously been involved in high-profile cases dealing with ancient DNA including that of Otzi the Iceman, the mummy of a man who lived between 3400 and 3100 B.C. Uh, let's see. Continuing on, he wanted to find the answer, uh, but didn't particularly to expect to find anything really exciting. Uh, they tested a bunch of samples that were sent in, and eventually what they came to find out is it was identical to a species of uh, polar bear but one that's been extinct for 40,000 years. Ooh. Which is a, thickens. an interesting uh, yeah, development. He thinks it could potentially be maybe the polar bear and some sort of wolf fucked and turned into some monstrosity with a vaguely humanish snout. That's a combination of animals I've never heard of before yeah, as it was a potential an, Bigfoot. I've never heard bear or wolf for that matter. Polar bear specifically, which, and the other thing is uh, the polar bears weren't native to the region he was looking in. So unless some dudes just got a big stockpile of polar bear hair. Well, so it had to be from a much older polar bear is what he's saying. Because the only time polar bears were over there was about 40,000 years ago. We do have to end 2020 on a a good foot, a big foot, if you will. They need... We need something positive and crazy to come out of this. We need an alien. We need a big foot... We need a uh, 9-11 was an inside job. Well, that bomb was a pretty good start, especially it was, if it wasn't something boring. It seems to have come to a rapid and uh, non-impressive end. I felt like I had told someone this the other day, but I'd felt I'd felt one more big one more big move before this all tied up. I don't know if it'll happen before the end of the year. Well, we've got through the end of the week. <laughs> but... But January 5th and 6th is going to be an interesting day one way or the other. It certainly is. Because either either those lunatics are finally going to get their way and they'll be able to actually get this on and we might get a touch of civil war. Or we're going to get a lot of people really, 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 really disappointed <laughs> to the point where I don't know if it breaks them or if it just makes them mad. I think I think we're going to see a lot of broken people. I think uh, we're gonna. Yeah. See, I think what we saw at the the Oregon place this week. I think we're gonna see that in large scale, and it's just gonna be a bunch of disappointed guys walking around with uh, AR-15 strapped to their chest, and a bunch of backup pistols all down their leg. Uh, like it's some shitty cop movie where they're gonna have to draw a weapon out of their shoe. Can you imagine if they show up on January sixth to that rally, just all geeked up, thinking the Donald's about to come out and tell them it's time to get it on? And then he comes out and just says, folks, I had a great time as president. I fucking lost. <laughs> I'm going to leave and I'm never coming back. Like yeah. they would, I don't know how they would like, that's like George Washington showing up and be like, nah, we're not fighting today. I hope he rides, was it Navy Force One, the the helicopter? I hope he rides it like a Bond villain where he just like grips onto the landing gear and it takes off with him and he I just hope, goes. I hope he's got like a Space Force uh, <laughs> vehicle made just for him and he lands in some sort of saucer. Speaking of uh, Space Force, why don't we wrap it up with, uh, I got this story, which only caught uh, caught my eye because of the title. 
This is from HowAndWise.com. Ex-U.S. Air Force servicemen claim tall white aliens visited Nevada casinos in human outfits in the 1950s. <laughs> A uh, former U.S. Air Force soldier named Charles Hall said that since the 1950s, the U.S. government had been in contact with aliens who he referred to as the tall whites. Besides, the ex-military man said that the aliens loved to relax on Earth and pretended to be humans. They often visited the bars and casinos of Vegas. To what end? I'm not quite sure. Uh, he claimed that in the 1960s, the aliens liked to disguise themselves as humans and visited casinos such as the Stardust in sunglasses while accompanied by CIA agents. So the aliens, like, were in shades? Yeah, and I guess uh, in exchange for letting the aliens fuck hookers, we got weapons or something. Like, I mean, so in exchange for showing them a good time in the casino, we got uh, technology out of it. I mean, if you've read your Bible, the aliens like... <laughs> it's the, been a minute. The aliens like to fuck our women. Is that what they're doing? Well, yeah, the Nephilim came down and slept with the daughters of man. Those sons of bitches. Yeah, they fucked our women. That was exactly what they, <laughs> That's why they were so terrified that the black people were going to fuck all the women. Yeah, it really does uh, translate quite... It was a biblical fear. That thing's been instilled by God. What an odd fear to have. I like that they're wearing shades, though. Is that because they got squinty eyes? Because wouldn't they need really big glasses? I'm guessing the eyes don't quite look right. You know how they talk about uh, the men in black? Who, yeah, they yeah, look yeah. human, but they just don't come across as human. Oh, so they're just dudes in, in suits that are pale? I think so. Oh, I okay. think they, they're kind of uh, whatever maybe, the tall white equivalent of the men in black is. That's what they were doing. Maybe they're just epileptic. <laughs> they just got to wear the, the they, big fucking glasses. They got the purple glasses on. That was another thing that was happening with cyberpunk. Is apparently, it was? Yeah, yeah, there was a bunch of people having seizures. That would make sense. That, that game, especially with whatever that, that ray tracing shit or whatever they call it, like I could, I could see that... Uh, Sending a few people into a seizure? Well, I guess there's a feature in the game uh, where you can, like, access people's memories, but apparently the machine you do uh, used you to do it. You remember how to have a seizure? Well, apparently it's essentially the exact same as the machines they use to induce seizures in a hospital. <laughs> like, it's a series of red and blue blinking I think they're That's called... A touch of an oversight. I think they're called, like, Stasi lights or something. But, yeah, apparently they, it's essentially, like, the exact sequence in which a seizure inducing machine would go about uh, inducing a seizure Whoops. in a medical setting. Well, maybe that's actually just part of the level. Like, you have to get through it without seizing up to complete the game. Or maybe it was to wipe your brain as to how bad the game was at launch. That's what they were hoping to do. That was their, like, the flash from Men in Black. <laughs> has anyone... Now, I don't want to give ideas to mass murderers, but has anyone made a game with the express purpose of trying to kill as many people as they can with it? Like the game killing them? Yeah, like on uh, uh, like some ring shit. There's where... been a handful of like anime where like they have the headsets and it like takes control of their brain and locks <laughs> them in the game. That's what we need. We need uh, we but need a triple A game studio to come out with a murderous video game. I mean, that's one of the big concerns with any like the VR shit and whatnot is you put it on your fucking head and if it short circuits somehow, that's not a good place to have something short circuit. The PSVR does look astonishingly close to, like, the cap they used in old uh, electric chairs. Oh, it does, like, and the it's thing not that comfortable. Kind of sits right over. No, it's, it's horribly it's uncomfortable. It's not comfortable at all. That is why, I mean, that's why people are concerned about, yeah, if you put a chip in your brain, like, what happens if that chip, like, what if short, it fucks up? <laughs> well, just, like, what if it shorts out? Because if you uh, short-circuit your brain, you uh, get Alzheimer's. Or what if you got to wait for your fucking brain to update that would Wait. suck, too. Just hold on. I'm buffering. This laptop just took eight days to install an update. I don't think I can affra uh, afford to not have my mind for a week. Oh, that yeah, but she's put in the, she's put in the miles. She's old. She's old, the yeah. The fact she, that that thing works is almost a miracle in and of itself. She needs to be uh, put out to pasture. What uh, else did I get angry about last night? Oh, yeah, I had a controversial take. Uh, <laughs> With I, yourself? You, you had a controversial take all alone? No, I got dinner and I had a controversial take because I got some fried chicken and there was coleslaw. On they like fried chicken sliders, and I fucking hate coleslaw. And I've decided what? coleslaw is the worst thing the South ever did. <laughs> that, is a, that is a controversial take because I fucking it's, love coleslaw. It's disgusting. No, no, no. They took they took mayonnaise, right? Which is just gross white people cum spread, <laughs> and then they decided what could possibly make this worse. Let's put cabbage in here. 
Let's put fucking gross cabbage in here. Now, Whoever created that should be tarred and feathered. Are you, are you eating? They should be hung up from a tree. Do you uh, do you put the coleslaw on the chicken slider? Because that's ref- my move. I won't eat that shit. I'm not going to eat your mayonnaise cabbage. I consider it a vegetable, so I do eat it. That's practically healthy. That's a, a, that's a white crime against humanity. Well, I am rather white, but I do... Yeah, I throw... For a chicken sandwich, I, I will put... The, the fried chicken down, a little bit of like barbecue sauce, honey mustard, something like that, and I put a layer of coleslaw on top. It's, no. It's no, tasty. No. Anybody who likes coleslaw is a white supremacist and has a Confederate flag. <laughs> well, now now I have to drag this into the conversation. You don't like condiments on anything. I you don't eat like, your burgers plain like a fucking psychopath. I don't like most condiments. You, you I, can, get, I can live with barbecue sauce and ranch on occasion, but mayonnaise is the devil's plaything, and no one should eat it. But you it get, is gross. You get all your hamburgers, cheese, and ketchup only. No, I get cheese and grilled onions. I don't eat ketchup. It's too too sweet. <laughs> no ketchup either. I don't like ketchup, and I don't like tomatoes. Too oh, sweet. Oh, Bishop uh, gets, I think, cheese and ketchup. So yeah, Cheese it, and grilled onions. It's so fucking dry, though. No, not if you get grilled onions and nice and cheesy. Yeah. Yeah. You putting lettuce on this? Go eat a fucking salad. No one wants lettuce. I on did che- eat a salad. You know, <laughs> you know how che- you know how a cheeseburger was created without a fucking salad on top of it. It was cheese and burger. Only because it was back in the day when they thought it was like against religious rules to combine multiple food groups. No, this is the God heated, didn't want lettuce on top is, of a cheeseburger. This is the problem with losing our religion in this country. Now we have <laughs> fucking wild toppings on everything. We've strayed from the Ten Commandments. Cheese. And only grilled onions. That's the only thing you need. Anything else, I'll allow mushrooms on occasion. I don't like them, but other people do. But all this other nonsense is ridiculous. Now, you know what? I do think part of this is a uh, class divide. Not to bring up, not to bring up monetary issues, but are you calling me an elitist? Partially, indirectly, I suppose. But okay, when you buy really shitty meat, you have to cover up the taste of the really shitty meat. So you gotta throw a bunch of shit on your burger to cover up how fucking bad <laughs> the burger is. I don't know. I think I think this is just uh, having too many options and getting decadent. This is how countries end. I, I want Five Guys now because I get everything on my. Uh, if I go to Five Guys, oh, I get who's everything. Who's the elitist now, Mister Twelve Dollar Hamburger? <laughs> well, I've I've reached a point in my life where I can afford twelve dollar meals. It's it's really uh, I'm we, coming up in the world. We've made it. I yeah. I was saying earlier, we've already made more money this year than Van Gogh made in his entire career. Yeah. What a poor fuck. And we haven't cleared a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> We're still way higher than he ever made. All right. Uh, should we call it there? I and think I got two years. <laughs> So far, so far. Yeah, there's still time, I Licking guess. Licking more of that lead paint, you might lop one off. Look, if I get 1.2 mil per month on OnlyFans, I'll cut the year off once a month. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just glue it back on, cut yeah. it off, same yeah. time every month. Uh, what are we doing for Space Weirdo Friday this week? Do we have anything in line so, yet? So I think my tentative plan for New Year's Eve and then Space Weirdo Friday is I think we'll do like an hour, hour and a half lead in up until midnight. Uh for New Year's Eve, and then we'll just right. go right into Space Weirdo Friday at midnight, and I don't know, maybe I'll set it as a premiere, and we'll sit in the chat and whatnot and talk to, like, the three people who watch it. Let me throw this out there. I think uh, if people want to look into what we're going to be talking about, I want to plug this YouTube channel. Um, they've been doing the Corey Good Accountability Project. Yeah, oh, fascinating watch. Can't wait to break this down. Oh, fuck, the channel name's too long to show up. Um, Nothing really to do with aliens, but the drama's delicious. It's called Forward Action Committee. If you want to, uh, if you search Forward Action Committee, a council for truth, there's a, a nerdy dude wearing the same glasses I'm wearing right now, basically, in the, in the thumbnail. And he did a series of interviews this week with people who... I said Siri and my phone just tried to... <laughs> uh, he did a series of interviews this week with a group of people close to Corey kind of talking about how he's maybe a piece of shit. It was pretty revealing, I'm going to be honest. Having watched a handful of them, it's, it uh, it shed, shed some light on what's uh, been going down the last year or two. So Especially it, Jordan Sather, because he was really in the he middle of it. He was tied into that He group. was in the middle of it, yeah. So, uh, is that going to be our Get Fucked Up episode, too? Is that going to have to serve as our... That, well, that's why I think we'll start at, like, uh, I guess, 10.30 or so, because I'll be able to get one or two of my 
shots in <laughs> and we'll get sufficiently turned up and we'll just go straight through uh, Space Weirdo Friday and see if we're still conscious by the end of it. All right, sounds good. Then uh, we will see you back here on Friday. Mm-hmm. Hootie hoo. Well, Thursday night. Thursday night, yes. Yeah. Not, all right. Hootie hoo. Mamba out.